There's been a lot of shuffling at the top of the bracket this week, but there are two teams that are starting to separate themselves from the rest of the pack in terms of bracketology purposes, and that's Villanova and Kansas. The Wildcats are the top ranked team in the country, but the number one overall seed in my bracketology is Kansas. The Jayhawks have won six straight, including wins over Oklahoma, Kentucky, and West Virginia. They lead the top-rated RPI conference in the country and are well on their way to an unprecedented 12 straight Big 12 title. I mean, that is incredible. It really is. 2004. Since 2004, they've been winning conference titles. I mean, geez, I was a junior in high school. I certainly didn't have all this uh, beautiful cheek fur on my face. I had a lot of patches on there. Um... But, man, I, looking at the camera right now, man, I got to shave. Jesus. This looks hideous. Really, look at all these long whiskers and shit. Ew. Probably got fleas in this shit. Villanova, meanwhile, has been steady Eddie all season long. And while they may not have, you know, the top tier wins, like some of the other one, two, and three seeds in my bracket, they only have three losses. And two are against top five RPI ranked teams in Virginia and Oklahoma. The other was to Providence, the 38th ranked team in the RPI. They have a chance to basically wrap up the Big East regular season title Wednesday night with a win at Xavier. That would give them a three-game lead in the conference. Now, on to the other two number one seeds, and both are top seeds for the first time in my bracketology this season. One is aforementioned Xavier, which, like Villanova, only has three losses on the year. Uh, the difference between the Musketeers and the Wildcats, however, is two of their three losses came to teams ranked in the 80s, Creighton and Georgetown, but they've been steady and consistent all season long as well, just like Villanova, and definitely deserving of a number one seed. Uh, Virginia is my other number one seed. The Cavaliers are red hot, winning eight of the last nine games. The only blemish was that one point loss at Duke, which, you know, quite frankly, was a bit of a fluke because Grace Allen hit this ridiculous circus shot at the buzzer. That, quite frankly, I still don't know how the hell went in. UVA is an impressive 8-2 against the top 50, including a 5-1 mark against the top 25. So on paper, they are very, very impressive in terms of the bracketology purpose. To show you how close the number 1, 2, and even 3 seeds are, I had 7 teams jockeying for that other 2 number 1 slots. And uh, the others... That I had, you know, Miami, Oklahoma, Michigan State, Maryland, and North Carolina. It's the first time this year, my bracketology, that I don't have Oklahoma as a number one seed. The Sooners and leading contender for Player of the Year, Buddy Heald, are in a funk. They're not hitting jump shots right now. They're not hitting that three ball like they like to shoot. They've lost three of four. The Terrapins, meanwhile, have lost two straight including a shocker to Minnesota on Thursday night. It was the first Big 10 win of the year for the Gophers, who are ranked 216th in the RPI. Now, just to talk about the Sooners for just a second. You know, in the NCAA tournament, obviously you have to win six games to win the national championship. And for a team that likes to shoot as many three balls as they do, that means that they have to be pretty consistent from beyond the arc for the entire tournament. Now, are they capable of doing that? Possibly. I mean, Buddy Heald is just incredible. I, mean, I don't know if he's still shooting over 50% from three, but the difficult shots that he hits, wow. But, um, you know, it's something you definitely got to take into account when speaking of the Sooners and, and Maryland, meanwhile. I mean, I, I brought this up last week. I, I was, I'm kind of concerned about them. You know, um, they, they played a lot of close games. They don't beat anybody. They don't blow anybody out. Uh, I, I think their starting five is overrated. I think Melo Trimble is overrated. I don't think he can hit jump shots. Uh, you know, um, they got those two transfers, you know, Rashid Suleiman and Robert Carter. I mean, they've been okay. Uh, I'm not a big fan of Diamond Stone. It's just, you know, you, you got all these different parts on this team, and uh, they just haven't meshed yet. I, I don't know. There, there's just something missing about that team. I could be wrong. Watch them win the national title, but not a big fan of them. So that's a team that I can see losing, you know, uh, third round. Obviously, what previously was a second round, but it's third round now, even though it should be the second round. I mean, it's so stupid calling the round of 32 the third round, but I can see, it, you know, a team like Maryland losing then. So I don't like them at all. Uh, coming off a loss to 
rival Duke on Wednesday night. The Tar Heels slid down to the three line. UNC is just three and four against the top 50. So this is a team that looks better on paper, you know, in terms of the roster than it does in bracketology purposes. I mean, three and four against the top 50, that's not really, really that great. Uh, and again, this is a team that, you know, I said last week, uh, you know, North Carolina is the favorite among many to win the national title. And I am just, I'm not sold on them. Uh, I, I think you need guards to win the t in the tournament. All they have is Marcus Page. They don't have anyone that can hit a jump shot but Marcus Page. Sure, you know, they can hit the offensive glass. They have a great front court led by Bryce Johnson, Kennedy Meeks. You got Justin Jackson. But, uh, again, I I don't know. I, they don't have the it factor. And a perfect example of that is that Duke game on Wednesday night. That was a game that they dominated. They should have won. And they didn't put them away. That's a problem. I, I mean, that's a problem. That that was a game just like uh, Wisconsin last year. They played them in the Sweet 16. It was a game that they kind of controlled, and they let Wisconsin off the hook, as Dennis Green likes to say. You know, um, so not a fan of them either. We'll see how far they go. Uh, the school that made a big jump this past week is Alabama. Winners of five straight, including a home victory over Texas A&M, and that goes with road wins against Florida and LSU. I mean, Avery Johnson has done a fantastic job in his first year at Tuscaloosa. They play really, really good defense, very stingy. Uh, you know, um, I don't know how really great this team is, but um, it's certainly deserving of a tournament bid right now. I mean, just what they've done the last week alone. So, um, you know, kudos, kudos to Avery Johnson. So there's that. All right, uh, that's it for this video. I've gone on for long enough, so... Hope you guys enjoy. Hope you guys like the bracket. Let me know if you, there's any disagreements with it. Uh, let me know in the comment section below. So, obviously, again, the bracket will be in the comment section. It will be in that description box. So, check it out. Talk to you later. Peace.